COVID is a highly transmittable disease and staff in the hospital are trained specifically in the use of PPE to avoid transmission amongst themselves, protect other patients and care for their environment. Whilst your loved one is awaiting test results from COVID, um, there won't be any visiting allowed, but every measure will be made to ensure that um, there's very clear communication lines for your relatives and yourselves be that with the use of iPads or mobile phones, there's certainly a phone in everybody's room and um, medical and nursing staff will make every uh, opportunity to keep you up to date while you're waiting those test results. Uh, so if your loved one's been admitted to intensive care, it would have been agreed by the medical staff that uh, intensive care would, would benefit your family member. Uh, unfortunately, until the COVID result comes back negative, you still won't be able to visit them on the intensive care unit. We will still, however, use iPads and other devices where you can communicate uh, with your relative. Uh, but there will also be daily updates from medical staff around how the treatment's going and uh, your thoughts will be um, foremost in ours at all times. Should your loved one um be receiving end-of-life care, every opportunity will be made to incorporate you in those decisions and that care. Um, if your relative is COVID positive, um, we'll be doing a risk assessment on yourself and your family to see if there's any opportunity to bring you into the hospital to be part of that end-of-life care. Um, the priority is always um, to have family be a part of end of life and certainly be within the, the patient's environment during end of life. Um, and again, we'll be using uh, all devices available to try and keep you in that space. Um, also incorporating if you're required spiritual care or any other support services that might need to be brought in. And we'll communicate that through the use of um, telehealth or certainly over the phone to your family. It's a privilege to be able to look after people at the end of life. And certainly whilst we're in this unusual environment that we're all experiencing, every opportunity will be um, put in place for your family member. So, yeah, if your loved one passed away in hospital and, and you're not being able to attend for a number of reasons, then uh, the medical and nursing staff will do everything they can to uh, assist you during that very difficult time. Uh, it's very foreign for us as clinicians not to be able to support the family at the bedside when their loved one is dying. Uh, but what we will try and do is we'll facilitate um, uh, telecommunications or uh, a telephone to their ear. Um, and it's important they realize that their loved one will have somebody with them at all times and will care for them right to the end. Um, after they have passed, then uh, the clinical staff will contact the family member at about 24, 48 hours, uh, just to answer any unanswered questions, but also to check on how they're going. And in intensive care, we will also follow them up again at about eight to 10 weeks to understand their experience and how we can continue to improve care for all families at end of life.